Welcome back. Agencies have a September 2022 deadline to transition to the Enterprise Infrastructure Solutions contract. The Department of Health and Human Services has already made the switch. HHS says it saved $700 million. Emily Murphy, the Administrator of GSA, is back. Eric Hargan is the Deputy Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. Eric, welcome. Uh, Emily, the, not everybody's in a great place with EIS right now. What are agencies like HHS that are having success doing to have that success in your view? I think HHS did two things incredibly well. The first one is they looked at this as a real opportunity for transformation. They weren't trying to just go like for like. They looked at EIS and said, we can do so much more in terms of modernization. Um, and in doing so, they were able to achieve really amazing uh, savings. But I'd say additionally, HHS worked with GSA to figure out how to take what they previously awarding as 10 different task orders to support mission needs and instead consolidate that down as much as practical uh, into one solicitation. And they, uh, the, this was led from the secretary level down. Um, it, it was just an incredible commitment from HHS and the results speak for themselves. Eric, I think the thing that is most significant to me about this transition is the fact that you're the one that's talking about it. This is happening from the number two position in the agency that you have insight into this. Why is that leadership position, why is that prioritization from somebody at the DEPSEC level important in a transition like this? Well, when you have to consolidate a lot of our different agencies that have all different missions in this, you have everything from the Food and Drug Administration, National Institutes of Health, Indian Health Service, uh, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, you really have to have a departmental leadership involved in this to make sure that that all of these different lines of service can come together. We had over 275,000 lines of inventory that had to be looked at as part of this, and we had to bring together a lot of different contracts. And, you know, as the administrator talked about, you know, it's not just a matter of bringing together into a single contract. It's also being able to accelerate the transformation of our infrastructure as well at the same time, to be able to modernize it as well as create these savings. And, you know, by getting out in front, working really closely early with GSA, I think that's what helped kind of make this a real success uh, because it does take a sustained leadership focus on things like this to be able to bring together all of the different disparate elements of our department uh, into it and bring forward a success like this. Eric, I've only referred to this being an opportunity for transformation. You used the word transformation a moment ago. How did you evaluate where you wanted the department to be two years from now or five years in the future to decide what that transformation should look like? Well, you know, we can see on the horizon a lot of changes happening within, you know, our telecom, cloud, 5G, a lot of things that are going to be coming on the horizon that we have to get ready for. Um, you know, it's very tempting sometimes to kind of just let things go uh, on as they have been because things, you know, they go, well, things are still working. But it's more important to kind of reach out for those transformations, technological transformations, system transformations that have to take place to make sure that you keep pace within the government with what's going on outside. So we approached this uh, both working with the with uh, OMB on the president's management agenda side of things with OPM and also with, uh, with GSA very closely. And it really built on Reimagine HHS at the very beginning, the Buy Smarter initiative that we had launched in 2017, kind of built on that as well. So some of the principles we had already been working with, we were able to kind of bring in uh, to this EIS drive uh, to be able to create this success. Emily, what, do, what have you done with EIS so that somebody like Eric or his successor at some point in the future has an on-ramp to take advantage of new technologies that don't exist today, given how long EIS will be in place? Oh, that's a great point, Francis. EIS is a 15-year contract, so we purposefully designed it so that there would be the ability to have those on-ramps for new technology, continue to modernize, and to bring that in under a um, a one consolidated solution for agencies at the same time giving them lower prices. I think that the ability for each of the nine vendors to add new technologies over the lifetime of the, of the contract is going to make the uh, make this contract even more of a success. 
Eric, how did you build those on-ramps into your strategies? It sounds to me like you built a strategy around, as you mentioned, PMA and Imagine HHS and so on, but right. that strategy will change over time, I imagine, whether it's with you and Secretary Azar or your successors, and I wonder how you're leaving those on-ramps open for implementation from the agency side. Well, a lot of this is by the fact that we partner early with GSA. So they're providing those on-ramps and our teams being integrated with them early on. And I can't stress how important it is that people start early uh, with this process because it takes a lot of time. Uh, when you particularly, you look at a sprawling, you know, the largest department in federal government, uh, it's, it's a sprawling department. Uh, to be able to bring all those things together, it really does take a lot of time and focus. And so we have to work when when uh, Emily's team is providing those on-ramps, we learn about them and we manage to fit them into the overall structure that we're building to make sure that they're there for the future because this is a long haul. Uh, this isn't something that we're going to do just all at once. Uh, and even getting to this point of awarding uh, a contract that is eventually going to save us, we think, over $700 million over the over that time, uh, that takes time, and we have to look at it not just as a cost savings issue, but as a transformational issue, as a as a way to kind of achieve continuous, I think, transformation uh, in these fundamental systems that we're going to be using as a department for years, decades to come. Eric, we have about 30 seconds left. Is the cost savings the primary way that you'll measure success of this transition, or are there other ways that you'll measure as well? No, I think how we're going to measure it is through the transformation that this brings to our overall mission, you know, the health and well-being of all Americans. This is something that we look at as a way to, to transform and modernize the department and ultimately be able to enable the mission. Saving the money also enables the mission, uh, but also the better technology and the modernization, that also enables our mission, which we think is very crucial, as I say, the health and well-being of all Americans. Eric Hargan, Emily Murphy, thanks both very much for joining me today. Thanks, Thank you. Francis.